Hey everybody, Unstable Gamer here, and welcome back to Marvel Future Revolution. In this video, we're going to talk about the Halloween event, and then we're going to take a look at the maintenance that we have, the update for next week on November 3rd. Got a ton of stuff to talk about, the Eternals, Companions, so much. Very cool stuff. But first, before we do, if you're just now finding this channel and you want to stay up to date with everything Marvel Future Revolution, consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out. All right, and welcome back. So the Halloween event just started today as of the recording of this video. So let's just take a look at that. So this is similar to when we had the Dormammu event when the Dark Domain first launched. We had a, we were chasing him across all the different realms and stuff, all the different regions. We now have Hobgoblin, or Green Goblin, sorry. Green Goblin's Nightmare here. We do have the different locations. The thing that's different about this one is you're not getting credit for for taking him out in City Cluster or Ravaged Plains or Great Desert and Twisted Border. You have two opportunities to get rewards. So just go to the highest one you can, the highest one that you can participate in and collect those rewards. So that's what this is for. You get to do it two times a day. You also have the Trick or Treat Blitz five times a day. So you get 100 coins from this one. You get 50 coins a day for doing your raid and 50 coins a day for doing your spec ops. So if we take a look at all of that and your potential your potential reward here, maxing it out, depending on where you are, but if we were just to max it out and, and go, to, go on the twisted border numbers, you get anywhere from 90, that's the minimum you can get, all the way up to 125 if you, if you place first. So if you do this every single day, you can collect two, what, two to 3,000, somewhere in there um, of those coins. And what do those coins get you? If we go into here and into our tokens over to most wanted, this is what we can use it on. Now, we definitely have enough if we do this every single day to get Green Goblin's treasure chest, which you can see what is in there, this stuff here. So uh, if you take a look at this, 75% chance to get this, 25% chance to get these uh, three-star items here, and those are 10, 10, and 5. But if we take a look at this, I'm just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can take a look at everything that you can get in here. But uh, it looks like more often than not, we'll probably get cores because the cores are a 3.7% chance where everything else is less than 1%, it looks like. Dot 9% for the cards. And then uh, if we go up a little bit higher, dot 4% on some of the other cards. So it looks like we will probably get cores more than anything out of this. You can only get one per squad. So then with the less leftover stuff, you just use it towards whatever you need to. I really wouldn't use it towards the unstable convergium. I think it's a waste. Unless that's all that you have. If you were, if, if all you had left over or if that's all you could get with 100, you could use that. But uh, the draw tickets, whatever you need most of, whether it's uh, probably not dimension box, but cards or, or costumes, that's where you can spend that on. And this is going to go over this course of six days. So pretty cool. I thought it was. I thought it was pretty cool. We get to find uh, Chase Hobgoblin around and get some rewards there. Um, so other than that, now we have the Eternals update. I'm just calling it the Eternals update coming up next week. So we're gonna go ahead take a look at those patch notes right now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So this maintenance notice here. This has to do with the update that just happened today on the 27th. Uh, so there's some stuff here if you want to take a look at it. I will leave a link in the description below for you to check it out. It talks about some changes with some servers, some matchmaking. Also, there is some bug fixes here. There's some other stuff in there too if you want to check it out. And then uh, the cool stuff though, the real exciting stuff, is really what's supposed to happen next week. One thing I will call out, they do say, we would like to divulge some key information regarding the major update we're aiming to complete on by 11.3. So they're aiming for it. Hopefully everything goes through. Hopefully everything's great and it launches on time because there's some really cool stuff coming up <laughs> in this update. It's massive and it really is game changing. First and foremost, we have a companion system coming. So they talk about a companion system that is going to, right here, companions also have an active skill that allows assisting in combat, supporting or enhancing your playable hero. So how does that happen? I don't know, but we can have a maximum of four companions to form a team. How do we equip them? Don't know what that looks like. What do they look like on screen? Are they, we gonna just have our companions running around with this? We can see them on screen. I don't know. So that's Tons of different questions I have about this. We know that all four Eternals are going to be a companions, companions, so they're not playable characters. They are companions. So how that system works and everything still 
We know a little bit about how to get them right here through a new Epic Invasion that's coming up right here, Epic Invasion for the Eternals. We also know Alliance Ranking Rewards, the Convergence Box, we can get them from there as well. So we know how we can get them. We know what kind of what they're supposed to do, but there's all these different things on what else. You know, how do you equip them? How do you use them? What are their skills like? Things like that. So all that stuff will be coming next week, hopefully, as long as everything's good. As far as this epic invasion goes, this just talks about how th we have the Thanos epic invasion, and now we're going to be rolling over to the Eternals epic invasion. So that'll be pretty cool there. We have an Alliance Omega War for Beta. So this is very, very cool stuff, especially for highly competitive alliances who want to go head to head. So again, this is going to be a Beta. One thing that I suggest as this goes live that we give as much feedback as possible to the devs. And whenever I request feedback, please make sure it's constructive because we want to get as much constructive feedback to the devs so they can make this Alliance War, this Alliance Omega War, the best it can be and the most positive experience possible. Um, I will say, it says agents can start playing the Alliance Omega War two weeks after the Eternals update. So if that happens on the 3rd, Right here, if everything's uh, on track for that, that means, what, the 17th is when we should expect the Alliance Omega War beta, which is cool because it allows us time to get used to the new systems, like, well, we got some other stuff to talk about, but like the companion system, figure out how to get them, get, get them, how best are they going to help us in our battles, and how best are they going to help us in PvP and things like that. Are there PvP-centric companions? versus PvE, what kind of benefits are we going to see? We really don't know. So it gives us some time to get familiar with that before we go into this Alliance Omega War, I think, which is very, very cool. So exciting stuff there. We have a new ranking system coming with it as well. So we got Alliance ranking as well as Elite ranking. It's cool stuff there. Total contributions of Alliance members will determine their Alliance ranking on the server. As far as Elite ranking goes, Agents can check the strongest player on the server and 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 lists will be uh, and lists will be divided into ranks by squad and ranks by hero type. A, uh, a special symbol will be awarded to the top player. So all this data is going to be dumped into the game as well so that we can see kind of what that looks like. Also, I like numbers. I like taking a look at who the strongest is, things like that. Um, especially if you're super competitive and you're like, all right, I want to get that guy next time around or whatever, however it turns out. It's cool that we have all this information and all this data coming in through the game. Just kind of helps engross us and pull us in, I think, um, as, as and help uh, helps, helps drive some of that competitive nature. I think it's cool. All right, we have a couple other things to talk about. This transmutation. So this was something that was brought up in Dev Note 2. So what it says here is convert costumes and Omega cards to those of other heroes. So you can transmute, you can use the transmute to change your costumes and Omega cards to a use, uh, to be usable for another hero in your squad. For costumes, only the hero that equips the costumes will change and all its information and stats are retained. All right. For Omega cards, only the hero exclusive stat will be converted and applied. So... When we take a look at that, what's the criteria? We have costumes, four star to six star. We have Omega cards, four star to six star as well. The costumes here do, does include the nano fused costumes. And so just kind of kind of thinking about this, right? So if you've got all this saved up gear, if you've got all these saved up cards, you got four star cards that has the exclusive um, stat to that character. You can go ahead and reassign that to somebody else. How does that work? Are, what currency, I mean, are we going to use gems? Are we going to, is there a currency in the game that we have to farm in order to get what we need in order to transmute these? We don't know what that looks like yet. And then, and then are you able to just, are you going to just be able to select which hero you want? How does that work? Really not sure. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they implement this. And once we see this next week, I'd be very interested to hear everybody's feedback on it. I think it's a good mechanic to allow it, you to move those types of those uh, cards and that gear, especially when you have new characters coming up into the game and you want to gear them up quickly so you can move through the storyline as quickly as you can so you uh, can start enjoying some of that in-game content with newer characters. So I think it's going to help with that as well. It is only, if we take a look at that gear too, want to make sure to point out it is only for region and special costumes. 
So keep that in mind as well. So if you want to start saving up all your extra region gear, special costumes, things like that between now and next week, if you haven't already, um, same with your Omega cards, some pretty cool stuff there. Next is the badge crafting system. Same here. I would recommend saving all of your all of your um, badges, all your four, four or five and six. Uh, you're not going to do anything with the six stars, but a function that allows agents to craft and acquire four star to six star blitz battle badges will be added. Man, some of these... <laughs> Some of these words that they use are very tongue twistery. Anyway, the previous grade battle badge will be used as a crafting material. So when we take a look at this, craft higher grade battle badges with the battle badges you possess. Oh my gosh. It really forces you to talk slower. I'll tell you. All right. So what does this look like? What does this crafting system look like? What we currently have in the game right now is if you want to enhance a piece of gear, you have a four-star piece of gear, you need five four-stars in order to make that four-star a five-star. Is that what we're gonna see here? Is that how this works? We don't know. All we know is that we have a badge crafting system coming into play. So that'll be interesting. I think that's great as well, be able to craft those badges because I know just running through Blitz to try and get the badges that you want and you need has been very frustrating and it's nice to be able to have another option or another way to be able to craft or get higher star level badges i'm just gonna say badges not battle badges just badges <laughs> okay so we have that um and then we have this nano fusion costume option change as well so they say a function that allows for changing the nano fusion costume options will be added nano fusion costume option change affects only the bonus stat so i want to call that out the bonus stat just like the current costume option change. So tons of cool stuff here. We can craft battle badges soon. We're gonna be able to reassign gear and Omega cards, which I think is absolutely awesome. We're gonna be able to select the bonus stat for our nano fused options. Well, you know, that's a question. How do we change that? What does that change looks like? Uh, look like? Again, is there a currency and stuff that goes into that? So a lot of questions that are still out there as far as how a lot of this works. But the mechanics, the mechanics, the thought, the, uh, the, the fact that we have some of these options coming up, I think is great. I think it's going to help really kind of infuse some life into the game and not make it so... Well, it is grueling. I'll just, you know, it is grueling trying to get a lot of these heroes up and going through and getting the right gear, a whole lot of RNG factor. So hopefully this kind of helps subside some of the RNG. Uh, we'll see. Uh, new ranking systems. I think this is Omega War. I think is going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to the Epic Invasion for the Eternals because I'm really excited. I think out of all of this, the, the thing I'm most excited for is the companion system and the battle badges. <laughs> Those are probably the two most the, the two things that I'm most excited for out of this one, I think everything else is great. I think it's a massive update. I think it's a game-changing update. And I'm very curious on your thoughts. What do you think? What do you think of this? Is it game-changing? Is it is it the direction that you want to see this game going? And uh, what excites you about it? All right, everybody, that's what I had for you. As always, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button and share your thoughts and questions in the comment section below. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk to you next time.